Hey everyone, here we are in the studio and we're about to start our first show. Let's give a round of applause and welcome the Davis Divas. Woo! I'm Wen Ho. I'm Janet. I'm Claire. I'm Justina. And we're the Davis Divas and this is our radio theater called the Divas Award. <coughs> Hello and welcome to the biggest entertainment event of the year, the D Diva Awards. My name is Wen Ho, and I'm here on the red carpet. I'm about to be with some of the industry's biggest celebrities. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic night. The stars are beginning to arrive, and we just can't wait to see the fashion for the evening. Well, it looks like our first diva is emerging from her limo. It is Miley Cyrus. Let's get a quick chat with her before she heads into the ring. What category have you been nominated for? I've been nominated for the Disney Gone Wild Diva Award. Well, congratulations. And who or I guess, what are you exactly are you wearing tonight? Well, I'm wearing star-shaped band-aids for my top and nude tights for my bottom. I think I'm making a statement that will appeal to many girls. Uh, Miley, would you mind maybe, I don't know, stop sticking out your tongue out? But my tongue is my signature. I have to have my tongue out in photos. That's how people remember me. My tongue is practically the most famous tongue in the world. I just have yo, to- Yo, Miley, yo, Miley, I'm gonna let you finish. But uh, Lindsay Lohan definitely was the biggest Disney Gone Wild Diva of all time. Uh, well, thanks for your opinion, Kanye. Here's Kanye West, everyone, with the surprise entrance. Hey, Kanye, isn't that your trophy <laughs> wife, Kim Kardashian over there with Ray J? Hold up, what the? Well, anyway, once again, here's Miley Cyrus, everyone. Thanks for taking the time, and good luck tonight. Next up, it looks like we have Johnny Depp. How Ooh. are you feeling tonight? This is the weirdest microphone I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not really good at this type of thing. You seem a bit unsteady. What, have you been drinking? Champagne? Uh, well, I mean, it's been one of those nights. Well, there he goes. He seemed a little bit off edge, but to put it mildly. Oh, the queen, the queen has arrived. Hello, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh my God. Are you okay? You ripped your dress again? Yeah, I'm good. I just lost another piece of my dignity, but what else is new? Anyway, even with your ripped dress, you look beautiful. Aw, thank you. I'm assuming it's Dior? How did you guess? Hot took a while. I'm wearing Dior Hot Couture and Neil Lane Diamonds. Thank God for stylists. Yes, you're beautiful as ever. So how does it feel knowing you started off the short hair club for Hollywood? The what? I mean, it seems like after you got the cut, everyone started chopping off their hair. Hmm, should I grow it all back to see what happens? Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, you know, like, just to see what happens. It's quite weird being a trendsetter. I'm like the type of person who never leaves the house because I don't want to put pants on. Real talk, anyway. You're amazing in the movie. Congratulations on yet another nomination. You missed some of the award shows tonight, but you were still working on Hunger Games, right? Yeah, yeah. I just left um, Friday night, so it's kind of nice. I learned my lesson. If there's ever an award season, get the heck out of L.A. So that's my trick. So last year, famously a most adorable moment, did you consider walking up the stage this year when choosing your dress? You know, this year I actually did a stair test out in the back staircase and I got a little dusty, but it worked. Good. But then again, I just tripped over a cone, so I guess that I'm not safe. You know that you're a role model to many young women. So what do you say to them? To young girls, teenagers, they love you very much. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, I don't really know. I guess my advice would be to stop taking so many selfies. <laughs> but seriously, though, I've seen a lot of selfies lately, and I think they're getting a little out of control. But that's probably my main advice, because I've just seen so many selfies recently. Okay, let's talk about American Hustle. Second time in a row, David O. Russell has four actor nominations. <laughs> Tell us about this collaborative thing that he does with you guys. He's, wait, who's here? I don't know. Oh my God, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. I gotta join in. Oh my God, oh my God. I was a teenager too once. Wait, oh my God, Leonardo. Um, sorry, what were we talking about? We're talking about David or Russell, the way he worked with you guys. I mean, he's no mystery. What, like he has 11 acting nominations in two years? He's the ticket. He can get you out of your comfort zone and make you do things you didn't even know were possible. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy the night and good to see you. And try not to fall this time. Hey, Will Poulter, congratulations on getting nominated for your role in The Maze Runner. Uh, thank you, and good to see you. 
Yeah, this is very exciting. So how do you prepare for something like this? I really don't know. I feel like I should have eaten less. There's a lot of stomach activity going on. I'm a bit nervous about Leonardo DiCaprio being here. It could all go very wrong, but I'm very excited, obviously, and I feel very lucky to be here. Now, if you could give a personal award out, the Will Powler Award, for someone you think that has rocked 2014, who would it be? The Will Powler Award? Uh, oh my god, I don't even know what that would be for. Awkwardness? Nerves? Um, the Will Powler Award? I would give it to George Mackay. He's nominated in the category this year, and he's a great friend of mine. You know, it's like, of course, it's a little bit weird, both of us being in the same category, but it's absolutely lovely at the same time. We just had a drink together before this, which was so fun and caught up. He's just such a great dude, and he's such a great, uh, phenomenal actor, so I give it to George. And lastly, who do you consider to have a fanboy moment over? You know when you see him and you have to be like, oh, I'm cool, I'm cool. It's Leo. It's Leo all day. Uh, DiCap without a doubt, it's the Leonardo DiCap without a doubt. Have you met him yet? I haven't met him, but I would absolutely love to. If I did, I'd have to freak out, so I hope I get to. I'm really hoping for a freak out tonight. Uh, yeah, I'll do it right here. I'm wishing you luck. Thank you so much. It's so nice to see you. Thank you. So here's our happy guy for Williams. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? You aged so much since I seen you last time. What happened? Oh, you're funny. Everyone knows I don't age. Yeah, you're kind of a modern day vampire. But apparently, according to anonymous Twitter user, you look like a sewer rat. They's a hater. They must be jealous of my hat. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. Anyway, Fur, how are you feeling tonight? You know, I'm actually pretty tired. I was up all night last night. Up all night to get lucky? Oh, look who's got jokes. I try my best. Anyway, back on point. It's been a crazy year for you. You hit number one on the global chart. The, hap the song Happy is pretty much everyone's favorite to-go song right now. How does it feel? It's just... It's just... I'm so happy. Really? That's the only word you can come up with? <laughs> I'm happy, man. Okay, well, thanks, Farrell. Enjoy your night. That was Farrell Williams, everyone. The happiest man alive. Looks like we have Amy Adams next. Hi, Amy. Hey, long time no see. Well, look at you. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. Have you prepared for your speech tonight? Oh my gosh, not exactly. No? Here I have one. I think it'll be perfect. Huh. Oh gosh, let's see what my speech is going to be tonight. I think you're going to love it. All right. Um, I like to thank Wen Ho. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. She's my daily inspiration, the star of my life, the peanut butter to my jelly. <laughs> See, isn't it perfect? I mean, I'm sure Leonardo DiCaprio would beg for it. I think we made eye contact a few minutes ago, or maybe it was my imagination. If only he knew. It could be Rose to his Jack. Hmm, keep thinking that. By the way, are you thirsty? Do you want some of my speech juice? Oh, God. Um, I'm a little bit scared, but yeah, sure. Great, can you hold the microphone for me? Sure. Okay. Okay, here we go, good luck tonight, cheers. You better not do too much speech juice with too many people. <laughs> of course. Mom, uh, just kidding, enjoy your night. Thank you. It looks like everyone has gone inside. Well, that concludes the Red Carpet Festivals for the Annual Divas Awards. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoy the show. How long uh, did you spend coming up with the names for the actors you were going to do for your show? Um, I come up with about three days. We all work together with our Davis Divas. Uh, oh yes, uh, and also, um, uh, what did you think about the whole, uh, how did the red carpet idea come into effect? 
Oh, the idea was from Justina. She wanted to do a red carpet, and we were all very excited to do a red carpet. And uh, oh, and uh, uh, how was it uh, doing the scripts writing for uh, this for the show? Uh, each of us, we did two celebrities, and then later we collaborate together to finalize the script, and then we rehearse the script together. Oh, uh, oh yes, and uh, were you, uh, did you find it, uh, were you worried at all about like uh, trying to get the accents for the characters right, like for Johnny Depp and Jennifer Lawrence and all? No, I wasn't worried, because the roles were for our classmates, so they got to do the role. Oh, yes, I can imagine. And... Uh, I'm not sure we're running out of questions. So. That's all good. Uh, now for a musical break. Oh, what's his music? That's good. Right. <clears throat> now for Savio the MC, a cappella. Men hurt each other in the passionate throws, then walk away saying, yeah, that's how the game goes. From the corner of the M to the corner office, our vultures chomping at the bit to take advantage of us. From the honorable battle to ya, run out of time. Be up to charge a hill, cause life is a grind. Got a shot to endure by holding someone close. Don't abuse them or lose them to your passionate throws. In throws, no slowing, you can't take me down. God in my heart, the unique SF sound. Blunt cruiser with my homies, yeah, we all over town. Flow through the city, sip some handy, rock the gold crown. Treated like royalty, kings of the bay. See us roll by, wanna press replay, no. This is the most cracking hood in California, eh? Don't care what you have to say. Ground breaks at the fault, but we never fall. Forget it all, we just need one call. Pick out your favorite poison at the MD Mall. Alcohol, tetrahydro, cannabinol. And that was Acapello by Danilo. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. Oh, yeah, totally. So this is Rita LaRue on the, on the mic, um, doing Acapella as well. Um, so, just one of my old pieces. Um, is the measure of our worth determined by place of birth or place of circumstance? Good luck or purely chance if I could enhance this artificial romance through fun for success of life, benevolent, accept the way it goes without questioning it. I'd reap just what I so deserve, all that I get, cause I've been the Cinderella, I've been the beauty queen, I've been the fool chasing a dream like in the movie screens, uh, cause I've been simple and clean and been seen as a little obscene and whatever. <laughs> Whatever I choose, I take to the extreme Cause my knowledge is my own Like porn for the soul Explicit illicit feels for the stroke of a metronome Like a violent event See my spine, my guts, my brain My mind, my soul, my feelings Maniacal and insane Rated M Uh, and uh, next up, we have the Radio Ramblers with their uh, with their Foley Sound show. Uh, in a few minutes, uh, we will have a few more air, air time first. Um, and uh, uh, next, we have Amir for interview. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So uh, tell me about uh, the music that you've been producing. Um, I guess I produce and like then, music uh, that's a mix Eugene, of like after that, after fat. Introduce, can you start and hip hop beats. Yeah. Okay, that's really fun. Okay, we can yeah we can start with the cooking. And then so Leslie, I'll get started. Oh uh, yeah, I'm in like a band. The band's the name is Sikamo Lane, but uh, good? my producer name is Monarchy. So okay. Yeah. You good? Uh, yes, monarchy. That is a very, a very effective word, especially. Oh, yeah, good thing it's in Davis. That's for sure. Prestige and all. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And uh, and now we have the Radio Ramblers all set with their show. So, uh, let's give them a hand. I'm Leslie. I'm Tanya. I'm Matt. I'm Eugene. And this is the most interesting Thanksgiving dinner of 2014. Upon first glance, the Underwoods seem like a normal family. There's Matt, 17, the baby of the family, back from his first year at Yale. Yale is overrated. Screw the man. Leslie and Eugene, the twins, 24, pursuing a career in law and medicine, respectively. Pass the turkey, Eugene. Leslie, how did your voice get somehow annoying? And the oldest, Tanya, still living at home at 29 years old. <laughs> nice to have all you back, losers. <laughs> oh, 
And we can't forget mom and dad and their loving relationship, always rife with witty dialogue. Oh, honey, aren't you glad the kids are home? Hmm. And there's me, your trusty narrator, here to tell you the tale of the Underwoods Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, the Underwoods, your classic suburban American family. Middle class, decent table manners, and each one of them hiding a nasty, nasty secret. Kids, it's so nice to have you all back for Thanksgiving. It's been so quiet and lonely without all of you around. Of course I love your older sister and your father dearly. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks, Mom. But it's always just so nice to say I didn't screw up entirely with you kids. I mean, I'm just so thankful to have the whole family together again. Now everyone else tell me what you're thankful for. Well, I'm really thankful to have started dating again. I met this guy online. Oh, tell me more. Well, I don't want to say too much right now. We haven't even met, but he's like really nice and smart. Kind of like Eugene, except minus the nice part. But maybe it's a twin thing? Honey, don't be mean to your older brother. Now, how about you, Eugene? Anyone special in your life? Well, since I hardly have time to go out these days, I've actually been trying to be more social on my computer. <laughs> You're such a loser, Eugene. I'm thankful that all of you are so lame because that means that I'm the cool child. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just thankful I don't live with you people anymore. <laughs> Bite your tongue. <laughs> this is some good turkey. Thanks. Everyone has loaded their plates and are currently just talking amongst themselves. Mom is talking dad's ear off about one thing or another, and Eugene is trying to ignore Leslie's incessant whining. Matt and Tanya have always had a system for times like this in order to discuss the most important topics. They tune everyone out. Matt, hey, hey Matt. What? I'm on math right now, don't tell mom. Jesus, Tanya, what the heck? What the heck indeed. Little does the family know, Tanya hasn't just been trolling internet forums and playing League of Legends for the past 11 years since she barely graduated from high school. She's been running a tiny meth lab in the upstairs bathroom right behind the tampons. Mom's postmenopausal. She doesn't go there anymore. I, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Don't touch my stash! Stash? Oh, um, I, uh, I uh, think, think I'm growing a little bit of a mustache. Oh, honey, you know I've got some wax in the upstairs bathroom. I can go get it for you if you want. No, 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 mom, no, that's okay. I'll, uh, um, uh, I'll uh, just uh, shave it, you know? <laughs> Tanya, dear, have I told you nothing about hair removal? If you shave it, it's just going to come in thicker and darker. And next thing you know, I'm going to be mistaking you for your father and trying to give you a sponge bath before bed. <laughs> Matt, hurry up in there! This interaction would have gone completely smoothly if Leslie had boundaries. But because she doesn't, and she's a little nuts, she bursts into the bathroom and sees a sliver of something bright and shiny as Matt zips up his jacket. What is that? Nothing. Gosh, leave me, me alone. Let me see, Matt. <sighs> Damn. Are you dressed as a comic book character? Why? Uh, I, um... What's going on? I kind of, uh, dropped out of Yale. What? Okay, I don't understand what this has to do with that. I've been working at a comic book strip club. <gasps> yes, it's true. Matt, in fact, has been working there since the second week of his first semester at Yale. After a month, the pay and the attention became much more appealing than midterms, and Matt dropped out to work full time. He's been booked every day ever since, and in fact just came from his latest show, and he has not had time to change out of his costume. All through dinner, Matt has been worried what his family will think if they found out. But Leslie, dear Leslie, has other things on her mind. Oh my god, Matt. If you were going to be a stripper, couldn't you at least have worn something cute? This is just nerdy. Oh god. As they return to the table, there's a gleam in Mom's eye that she only gets when she's much too curious about something. And because Eugene has been deflecting her questions all night, as Leslie sits down, Mom's attention is entirely focused on her. So, honey, tell me more about this boy you've met online. 
Okay, so like we haven't met yet, but we've been chatting online for a while, and even though he can be kind of boring sometimes, he always says that he can tell by my punctuation that I must be super hot, which is like so sweet and intuitive of him. He's like the same age as me. He said to be a doctor, so like you didn't accept nicer. Well, like I was trying to say at the beginning of the dinner. I'm online dating someone too, and I'm always really nice to her. And <laughs> Eugene, let your sister talk. Oh my god, I almost forgot to mention, he said he totally wants to meet me. We're actually meeting tomorrow night. Turns out, we're from the same area. <gasps> Hold on. We're meeting at the Olive Garden, 7 p.m. sharp, and he'll be wearing a, a red, red scarf. scarf. A secret unbeknownst to the two of them until now, Leslie and Eugene... <laughs> have actually been dating <laughs> each other. <laughs> Wait, you're sexy lawyer chick with three X's in the sexy? Oh my god, tell me you're not Dr. Mixime 9 Oh my god, you two are online dating each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up, you. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Dad? What's going on? Yeah, are you two hiding something? Huh? Huh? No, Dad's too boring to be hiding anything, Tanya, and Mom's just being really annoying. I resent that. I've only ever wanted what was best for you children. And annoying us out of the house was motivation enough for most of us, Mom. Well, at least I'm not in love with my own twin. Oh, burn. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys. It's not fair. I think I find someone, and all, it's all just a lie. <sighs> You're adopted, all of you. None of you are even slightly related to each other. We're, We're adopted? adopted? <laughs> They're adopted? How the <laughs> did those <laughs> people hide this from me? I'm supposed to be <laughs> omniscient. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Does this mean? We're not actually twins? twins? Eugene and Leslie look at each other clearly for the first time in years and realize maybe the reason they never had the best relationship was because they've always secretly been in love with each other all along. You know, incest is frowned upon and all, but I don't think the same rule applies for adoptive siblings. Oh, Eugene! Oh, Leslie! Matt goes on to become the most well-known and respected comic book burlesque stripper in the world and actually gets paid more per show than the rest of his family makes in a year. And he found a nice girl who appreciates his dancing. Leslie and Eugene are together for years before they go through a bitter divorce. Turns out the meanness from their childhood wasn't just due to the fact that they were attracted to one another. Leslie also turns out to be the best divorce lawyer in the state, so Eugene gets the short end of the stick. But it turns out that losing everything led him to end up with Tanya, who had gotten clean after a nasty incident involving a meth spill in the tampon cabinet and mom needing some absorbent material for a nosebleed. Mom and dad divorced soon after because, unbeknownst to everyone, including me, again, he was actually a really awesome guy that had a great personality, but only when he was with his other family. <laughs> Well, as for me, I quit this horrible job, effective immediately. The Underwoods have broken my spirit, and I can't even begin to understand how they hid these things from me. I hope they find someone sane enough to handle narrating their next reunion, because I'll be in Maui with coconut Mai Tais and a culturally appropriate grass skirt narrating the lives of beautiful surf bums and staying as far away from the Underwoods as possible. Wait, what? They're going to Maui for Leslie's wedding? Oh, for the love of peace! Thank you. Let's give another hand to the group. And now as we proceed back into the radio station, we will commence a countdown starting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are coming to you live from the studio with the freelancers and their radio play, Shelby the Vampire Hunter. Would you care to introduce yourselves? Introduce <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> oh, this is Angeli, and I'm playing Shelby. I'm Jared, and I am doing a report at the beginning as Elliot Stone, and I'm also the vampire. This is Dennis, and I'm the dad. This is William, and I'm Spike. This is Shelby the Vampire Hunter. Good evening. This is Elliot Stone with an emergency report. 
The recent string of disappearances has had its first breakthrough with the discovery of the first physical evidence of the case. A blood smear was found in the park outside of Willamette Mall, and forensics has confirmed that the blood belongs to missing teenager Carden Sterling, who disappeared two nights ago. Sterling was the latest in the string of a half dozen disappearances, but the only one where any evidence has been found so far. There has been little connecting the disappearances, except that they were all from high traffic public areas and, until now, no evidence was found. The victims seem to disappear into thin air, men and women, young and old. Nothing seems to connect the victims. They seem entirely random. Sterling had been at the premiere of a movie at the Willamette Theater with a group of friends, separated from the group to use the bathroom, and never returned. Like the other victims, no one saw anything suspicious. He was just gone. Hopefully, this evidence can lead to the capture of the perpetrator and end this crime spree. Since the disappearances all occurred in crowded areas, there is little advice to be given beyond only living home when absolutely necessary until this heinous criminal is caught. This is Elliot Stone reporting. We'll keep you updated on events as they unfold. And until then, stay safe out there. Mm. Hey, Dad, what time is it? It's already 1 in the afternoon, Shelby. What? I told you to wake me up at 11. I have to go and meet up with Spike. You better get going soon, then. It's getting dark with all the clouds. What? It's getting dark already? Where the hell is the sun? Okay, whatever. Bye. Where were you? You're late. Oh, my bad. I overslept because it was so dark. Well, whatever. Want to go see a movie? What movie? That new vampire movie that came out last week sounds pretty good. Suck me dry. How about it? Always with the vampires with you. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. <laughs> that was awesome. Eh, at this point, vampires are kind of overdone. Twilight kind of killed it. Nah, vampires are still awesome. Oh, hey, check that guy out. Which one? The one with the cape and the popcorn. What about him? He's cute. I'm going to go talk to him. Really? See you later. Really, Spike? Ugh, all right, fine, whatever. Hey there, did you just see something me dry? Yeah, it was all right. A lot of the lore was questionable, though. Tell me, do you believe in vampires? Yeah, I hope to get to meet an actual vampire someday. That would be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? I'm pretty into vampires myself. Do you want to come over and see my vampire stuff? I've got quite a collection. Oh, wow, that sounds great, of course. Hey, Spike. Answer the phone! Okay, finally. Where the hell are you right now? Oh, I'm at that guy's house right now. His house is huge, like Dracula's castle. He's handsome and rich, and he lives by himself. Most importantly, he's single. Wow, good for you, Spike. Are we still going to get food or what? Nah, I'm going to stay at his house and watch another vampire movie with him. He's going to make me dinner. Bye. Fine, enjoy your dinner. I'm getting pretty hungry. I think it's time for dinner. <laughs> sure, sounds... What? No! Oh my god, Spike, answer your phone. Beep, beep, beep. This number is not available at this time. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep. It's like the 10th time of me calling. Please answer your phone. <laughs> Finally, where are you? Are you guys still at the house? <sighs> Spike? Say something, you're freaking me out. If you ever want to see your friend again, come to my home. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, where does he live? I swear, if you hurt him, I'll... Where are you? Oh, right. You take the taxi to Sunnydale in Belmont, walk northeast through the woods, take a boat across the river, turn around five times and slide down the hill into the cave, which is next to a bus stop, which takes you to my house that is outside the movie theater. What? Can you say that again? Fine. I will say it again. You take the taxi to Sunnydale and Belmont, walk northeast through the woods, take a boat across the river, turn around five times, and slide down the hill into the cave, which is next to a bus stop, which takes you to my house that is outside the movie theater. Okay, so outside the movie theater? Hey, Shelby. Merry Christmas. It's from me. I really don't have time right now, Dad. Come on, just open your gift. Wow, it's a necklace, a cross made of silver. It's so pretty. I'll put it on right now. Thank you, Dad. Anyway, where's Mom? I haven't seen her for like a week. 
She left. We were at the mall shopping for gifts, and she disappeared with some guy wearing a cape. A cape? Oh no! I need to go now. Bye. Where are you going? Are you going to look for your mother? Don't. Hey, open up, you freak! It's open. Holy, this house is huge. Where are you, Spike? And my mom? There are coffins in front of you. Where do you think they are? What have you done with them? Are they dead? Who are you? Why is there a bite on their neck? A bite on their neck? Are you a vampire? Shelby, Shelby, Shelby. I thought you didn't believe in vampires. All this dealing with your idiocy has made me rather hungry. Go away. Don't come near me. <laughs> what? A necklace? Some trinket should not have that much power, even if it is a cross. Thank you, Dad. Best gift ever. You vampire, I'll come back again and kill you. Hey, Dad, it was a vampire. The vampire killed Mom and Spike. I need to kill him. I want revenge from, for them. Shelby, your mom and I were vampire hunters when we were younger. So vampires have a kind of hypnosis they use to lure people to their deaths. And it's been so long since then that she was vulnerable to it. I gave you the necklace because it has the power to protect you, but you don't have the power to kill the vampire. I think I have one hunt left in me, though. Dad, how come you never told me this, especially when she... I wanted to protect you. You didn't need to be involved. But now that you are, I know you won't stop until this is over. Well, how are we going to stop him? I still have our old weapons in the attic. Really, though? How did you hide this from me for so long? You never went in the attic because of the spiders, which was convenient for hiding it. There we go, crossbow and holy water. Should do the trick. Is this it? A castle, really? Yes, please be careful, Dad. Oh, you don't have to worry about your old man. Welcome back. Oh, and who is this? Some old hag vampire hunter? <laughs> Did you really think that would work? Dad, get him! <laughs> you brought your dad to fight me? Really? <sighs> your time has passed, you washed up hunter. Oh god, he's too strong. We need to leave now. But this is our chance! You should have fled when you could, girl. All you've done is bring me more food. Delivery is so convenient. No, stay back. I have a cross. The cross may stop me, sure. But the chain, on the other hand... And now you're defenseless. Uh. Uh. I love vampire movies. Making mortals think they can stop us. Always a feast when they come out. I wonder what's playing next week. All right, thank you for that, freelancers. So Shelby the Vampire Hunter, with my two other co-hosts, have either of you ever watched uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie or the TV show? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, no, I haven't. You haven't, it. Eugene. No. Leslie? I actually used to watch it like all the time, and then it was like on Netflix, so like I had like marathons. Um, so. Yes, fun fact, every season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is on Netflix, and I'm a huge Buffy nerd, I've watched it like two times, and so I'm, I'm listening to their radio play, and I'm like, oh, Shelby, like that is a lot more of a normal name than Buffy. Yeah. But they also named one of their characters Spike, which is a character in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, oh, it was a deliberate reference, according to the freelancers. Did you ever watch Angel? Oh, man. You know, I decided not to watch Angel on purpose. Yeah, she's getting her I bike. Like, we I really support that. Buffy and her feminist message, but like not necessarily Angel or specifically the actor, David oh, okay, Boreanaz. Okay. You know, did you ever watch it? I did, but I didn't really like it. And like, I don't know, I love David Boreanaz, but... I don't know. That that show didn't do it for me. Yeah, sometimes the spin-off just, you know, not as good as the original. Yeah, so Eugene, in terms of I guess are there any other I guess this is a vampire player, are there any other vampire movies or TV shows you're familiar I'm, with? I'm actually taking a vampire class at oh. oh, oh. <laughs> It's a film vampire film class and we watch different kinds of vampires from like nineteen twenty one or something. Wow. Nineteen twenty one all the way till present day. So vampire. what's your favorite vampire? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. My favorite vampire. My favorite vampire. Okay. Would be the typical Count Dracula. I'm gonna say typical Count Dracula. Yeah, you guys. Have you seen? 
Do you um, have a shovel with you? So God, you we watched it in my design yeah, class. Sure it's black and white, like and it's, it's very dramatic. I think it's the one with Bella Lugos. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have it. That's Dracula 1931. Oh, wow. You know your Draculas, huh? And so what is what is the analysis of these different Draculas that you do in your class? And can you apply it to the script in any way to their vampire? It's getting deep. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to finals week, Eugene. We might pull this stuff out on the final. <laughs> yes, I, I should know this, huh? Well, there is a lot of gender problems that are raised in the vampire. Gender, race, everything. Yeah, it's, 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 it's. it's <laughs> Can you give us some examples? I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, very. Like, I know that um, modern day, there's been a lot of comparison because, you know, there's a big thing for zombie movies as well. Yeah. And there's a big comparison between um, the idea of, like, the brain eating zombie and, like, the quote-unquote, like, brain-dead consumer who's, like, always in front of the TV. But in terms of vampire, like, I would love to hear some of that comment. Actually, yeah. They're, until, like, 19... 19- 80 something we only had male vampires really in wow. movies yeah who was and the first female vampire it's this movie called hunger i don't know who the female is because <laughs> i didn't really watch it yet oh. though i was supposed <laughs> to watch it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, a lot of gender issues yeah yeah do you do you see any of the typical themes in your class that happen in this play? Typical themes in the issue. Well, I mean, the vampire was a guy, so that <laughs> was like. And we're on to the next group. All right, so we are ready for our next radio play by the group Panda Power, and they're going to introduce themselves and the name of their play. Hi, my name is Jessica, and I will be playing Jamie. Hi, my name's Ling. I will be playing Margaret and the girl. Hi, I'm Pu Fu Gong, and I'm the narrator in the story. Hi, I'm Summer, and I'll be the announcer. And this is their radio play. The sun shrinks behind the horizon as the remnants of melted pastel sip across the sky. Jamie accompanies Margaret to her inaugural art exhibit. The gallery is well lit and warm, a stark contrast to the darkness descending outside its doors. to the Davis Art Salon second annual Community Carrots Exhibition. As you know, Davis students boast a wide variety of skills ranging from sculpture to portraits to photography and everything in between. Tonight's gallery displays this year's most prominent artwork, so please take the time to fully appreciate and perhaps even appraise the hard work of these oh-so-talented students. And now, without further ado, I present to you the Nelson Gallery Art Exhibit. Margaret, where are your portraits? I have to see them. Over there, across the room. Ah, yes. This is one of my favorites. The way the shadows fall upon her hollow cheeks render her complexion rather otherworldly. And those eyes, they've ensnared me in a glaring contest I cannot hope to win. These eyes took me ages to perfect. It's so hard to get them both just right. Somehow, there's always one eye that looks slightly off. Nonsense! And look at this one, the hint of a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth, as if the two of us are sharing in some intimate joke, unbeknownst to the rest of the world. Credit, Jamie. If I didn't know you better, I would think you were mocking me. I would never. Come on, let's check out other people's artwork. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, I like that one. I like that too. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Davis Art Salon, I would like to thank you so much for coming out tonight to support your peers. We could not have done this without you. I hope you all had a lovely time and had the opportunity to mingle with these artists. Have a lovely evening, and thank you once again for t coming. <laughs> Jamie and Margaret take their leave of the gallery and begin the outer spike right back to the dormitories. The two make their way blindly down the path, the shadows marking their movements. 
The wind whistled among the treetops, and even the moon denied them her silvery glow. Their bike lights cast twin beacons over the road. Ah! Oh my God, Maggie, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. The algorithm is so dark at night. Here's hoping the U situation hacks will find some misty streetlights. But it's more fun this way. Just imagine what creatures lurk in the shadows. A feral cow, perhaps? And a bola-ridden squirrel? Don't even joke about that. <laughs> if you listen closely, you can almost hear the savage mooing. Mm. Did you hear mm. that? No, oh, please. That was just the wind. No need to be so melodramatic. I'm not. I'm not. I swear I heard something. <laughs> well, it's off to Quarto for me. Have fun biking back to Tercero. Don't worry. The chances of you getting attacked by a mad cow are fairly low. On the contrary, the chance of you getting jumped on some dim bike path is probably a lot higher. Why do you say that? Please don't leave me back alone. You know this is the opening scenes of half a dozen horror movies. You don't even watch horror movies. That's why I need you. Say, did you know Tercero's haunted? Please don't do this. So back then, the dorms all had leather names. This one dorm, Tercero A, had a drawing of a girl's face on the underside of one of its awnings. No one knows for sure how it got there, but there are rumors. Legend has it that the drawing serves as an eerie tribute to two girls who had lived there. Student housing has tried multiple times to paint over the drawing, but it mysteriously resurfaces, retraced by a ghostly hand time after time. <gasps> Shall I stop? Yes. But then you'll never know the story behind it, and your mind will be tortured with these endless horrifying possibilities, and you will always wonder. As I thought. On a dark and stormy night many, many years ago, two sisters lived on the top floor of Tercero A together. They studied, went to some parties, and hung out with friends, living normal first-year lifestyles. One night, one of the girls was asleep in the room while the other was out late at her boyfriend's place. Oh my god. She's going to get murdered in her sleep, isn't she? Shh. As the clock struck three, the sleeping sister arose from her slumber. Driven by some demonic will, she sheds her blankets and climbs out of bed, her hands groping blindly for something, anything to write with. Her fingers close around a marker, and she staggers towards the windowsill and undoes the latch. Balanced precariously on the ledge, she begins drawing fiercely on the underside of the awning, her hand moving through the darkness of its own accord. Lightning cracks, illuminating the sketch for but the briefest of moments. The girl is shocked to see her own face glaring back at her from the canvas. Too numb to comprehend the situation, the girl stumbles back to bed and falls once more into a deep sleep. <sighs> the next morning, the girl is roused by her ringtone. Mom, what time it is? Why are you calling so early? Mom, what's wrong? She, she died in my car accident last night. <gasps> when she heard that, the other sister. What? The other sister, what? She killed herself. What? She hurled herself from their window and fell to her death. Oh my god, that's terrible. How am I going to sleep tonight? Don't worry, Tercero A is long gone now, as are the ghosts of the two sisters. Probably. They replaced the building with Sequoia. I live in Sequoia. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. Jamie, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Why would you tell me something like this? Oh, Maggie, I love you too. Have fun sleeping over the ruins of a haunted dorm. Sleeping? There will be no sleeping tonight. You saw to that. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm exhausted and I'm going back to Quarto. Good night, Maggie. As she had predicted, Margaret climbed into her bunk and tossed and turned relentlessly for what seemed like an eternity. Eventually, she managed to drift off into a fitful slumber. When Margaret woke up, it was still dark outside. She noted the clock at her bedside read 3 a.m. as her fingers skimmed across her desk and closed around the marker. Yeah. Wow! That was so impressive! 
I we've been we've been we've had a couple of plays so far, but I would say so far this is the one that has had the most impressive sound. And so for any listeners, I don't know if you're familiar with the way that sound is produced on the radio or for radio plays, but it's known as foley sound. And so the idea is, you know, with with lightning cracking and with the wind blowing, it's not actually lightning cracking or the wind blowing. It's all of them making sound with miscellaneous objects. Did you two have a favorite sound or sound effect? I definitely had one that they made. I like the belt a lot. Yeah, yeah. the belt was impressive. That's what they Make used for the lightning cracking. Yeah. You have one, Eugene? Oh, the umbrella that was nice. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the, wind, yeah. Uh, the wind sound. The wind was like a whistle and like yeah. an opening and closing of the umbrella. And then and then all those eerie little piano noises yeah. from t- this tiny little keyboard. I don't even know what you would call it. It was the greatest thing. Super impressive. And uh, I lived in Quarto, so like one of the characters, I'm safe. Did either of you live in Tercero your freshman no. year? I did live in Tercero. Oh, oh, Leslie, can you confirm or deny any of the rumors? Um, I've actually never heard that, but <laughs> they uh, just opened the new ones, so Sequoia is one of the new ones, mm-hmm. and so I didn't get the chance to even step inside. Mm. If I were a freshman living in Sequoia right now, I would feel a little bit wacky going to sleep. I'd say it was a very convincing story that they whipped up, and I, for one, am very glad that I don't live in the dorms anymore. I think markers should be banned. <laughs> <laughs> they should literally be illegal on yes. all of UC Davis campus. Eugene, do you agree? Yes, they they should not exist on this planet. Yeah. No. I've heard of rumors of other places on campus being haunted, and obviously they're all rumors, um, but does anyone else know of any specific places that have been quote-unquote rumored to be haunted? I do not, actually. No. House of Usher. <laughs> that's, that's not on campus. <laughs> we had uh, another member mention the House of Usher. Um, have either of you been to the Davis Cemetery, though, speaking of haunted? Oh, no. I heard the unit trans drivers see, like, ghosts every stop in front of the cemetery. Wow. That's pretty cool. They're ready. Oh. That is impressive. I've only been there during very, very peaceful moments. But uh, we're going to segue to our next group. This is that other team. And this is their radio play, which they are going to introduce along with themselves. All right, this is that other team, T.O.T. in the house. This is Danilo Pascaretta. <laughs> this is Amir Beck. This is Dylan Woods. This is Ruben Rojas. This is Tony. And our story today is called The Great Train Robbery, where it takes place uh, around 1911, and it stars a group of outlaws out to make it rich in the real world by robbing a train. Where did that varmint run off to, Pilgrim? Uh, no, I'm falling off this horse. Easy there, uh, uh, oh my god. Search the area. All this trouble over a little bank robbery. Just my luck. I better get out of here quietly. I think I'm gonna lose them. Well, hello there, friend. Hey, I didn't do nothing. That's not what the sheriff and his boys seem to be wondering. Well, you know, I was just minding, uh, my own business. Oh, so uh, how do you explain that bag of money you got on you? I'll take that. I uh, found it on the ground. Either you will lie to me, or you must think I'm pretty stupid. Well, I stole it first. Well, too bad, it's mine now. Why are you here anyways? I was just taking a stroll across town today, and I just happened to stumble across this little ruckus that you and your partner over there start at the bank. You almost got away with what could have been a successful robbery, but you have only proven to be less of an outlaw and more of a clown to me. Your partner's going to jail, and you got nothing. So, are you going to kill me? Been thinking about it, but I have a better idea. How about we partner up and rob a train this time? You want to rob a train? (laughs) You want to rob a train, you and me. Wow. (laughs) Either that, or I tie you up and leave you for sheriff. So, what's it going to be? Well, I don't want to sleep in a prison cell tonight, so... Good! Now, let's quit this place and head for my hideout. We'll gather some supplies for the robbery. 
Next, our outlaws go back to the second outlaw's hideout where they begin gathering supplies to start their great escapade. You just gonna sit there? Here are some things. We will need to rob a train. Some rope for when and if we need to tie up someone. A crowbar for opening the safe that they have stored in the back car. But here, the piece de resistance. Colt revolvers, each with six shots per round. Perfect tool for robbery. I want to use the rifle. No. When we approach the train by horse, we'll be jumping onto the train and we'll only have time to head for the safe without any large-scale complex. Being inside the train is what a revolver's for. Did you learn nothing from screwing up that bank robbery? Okay, be a prick about it then. What are these weird-looking things for? Bandanas for disguises. If we are seen, we'll need to be sure that absolutely no one can recognize us. Were you born under a rock or something? No, I was born next to a cow house. Cow house? Yeah, you know where they go hang out and get milk. The cows. <sighs> Maybe I didn't think this whole partner thing through enough. God help me. What made you want to rob a freaking train in the first place? Well, why do you rob people? Well, I guess money for sure. Well, there you go. Next, our outlaws take their horses out to the desert where they approach the train by horse. There it is. Do we seriously have to jump on? It's making a non-stop trip, and if the train arrives at its destination, all that gold in the safe is as good as gone. Okay, let's jump on the back car. That's where the safe is. Ha! You guard the door, and let me know if anyone comes this way. I'll get the crowbar ready. <clears throat> Won't they hear us trying to open it? Oh, <laughs> they will, which is why we have to act fast. Okay. No one's coming. Good. Just need a few more seconds. Uh, someone's coming this way. I'm almost done. Whatever you're doing, you better do it faster. Ugh. Just give me a little bit longer, and... <laughs> you did it. Just like breaking into my parents' liquor cabinet. Quit stalling and grab the gold. Oh man, these bars are heavy. They found us. I'll take care of the guard. Oh, God, what just happened? Aim for the guard, missed and hit a barrel that fell on him, and now he's out cold. Not how I planned it to happen, but hey, I'll take it. I'll last him up real quick. Also his mouth. Copy that. That should take care of him in case he wakes up. How's it coming with the gold? Pretty good. I got it all in the bag. And now would be the best time to get off. I'll call our rides. <whistles> Here come the horses. Left them there for when the train came by. I guess this is our stop. You could say that. Now jump! Well, we made it off. That was intense. But look at all the gold we got. We're going to be rich. So now what? Let's get on the horses and back to the hideout. We got some count to do. Yeah! Later, at the train station, far from where the outlaws robbed the train, the sheriff arrives to investigate the robbery of what happened. What in the wild world happened here, pilgrims? Hey, you! Here, let me get you out of these ropes. Hey, wake up, pilgrim! Huh, what happened? Ow, my head. You all right there? What happened, and why does the safe look like someone forced it open? Huh, so that's what that noise was. All I remember was hearing a clanking sound and headed over to the back hall to see what the hell was going on. I see these two men wearing bandanas trying to steal all the gold that was in there. I fired back at them, but they fired back and I got hit in the head. And that's the last thing I remember before I woke, woke up tied up in the rope. So you didn't recognize the perpetrators, Pilgrim? Uh, unfortunately, no, Sheriff. I'm sorry, I wish I knew more. Thank you for your time. Stay safe. A safe pride open? Where in the world could these robbers have gone to? Well, they can't run forever. Meanwhile, back at the hideout. So, uh, what are you going to do with your share of the gold? Not real sure, friend. Maybe buy a ranch. You? 
Maybe go get a meal that I can both afford and actually enjoy now that I actually have money again. Well, you enjoy it. So when are we going to do a robbery again? Soon. This was just part one of the rest of the trains we're going to rob. You can't just rob a bank? Uh, I think I'm out. Oh, ho, ho, no, you're not. Wait, what? Remember before? You help me or I turn you in. Until we rob the rest of the trains, we're in this together, 50-50, partner. How did I get myself in this mess? Don't think of it as a mess, friend. Think of it as a big opportunity. To get me killed, that's for sure. No, well, maybe. But just wait. Before we're done, you'll have your own tub of money to swim in. Wow, that was a plot twist in the end that I was not expecting. Yeah, it was really great. Um, it reminded me of like all the westerns and stuff. I mean, it was pretty accurate. Like, it was definitely like a classic yeah. western, and like they did a really great job. Cause you know, westerns they rely so much on imagery yeah. and like the the vision of the horses and the trains and everything. But they really got that with like like yeah. that yeah the sound. And there's that like one scene where they describe like what happened. And he's like, oh, I shot him, and the barrel fell on him. You know, it's like a classic western scene, but you can't show it. So like, just completely described it. Um, what was that? Oh, the the train noise. The train was really impressive with the pencil sharp, electric pencil sharpener. Yeah. So the noise that you hear of the train going by, uh, obviously we can't fit a large scale train in this small studio. So they brought in a pencil sharpener with them in order to make that sound. So uh, everybody though did an incredible job. That is the end of all of our radio plays for Techno Cult Radio. And we are going to switch back to the music now in a countdown of five, four, three, two, one.